when I was uh, in, the, in the game itself, I, I, I married the game and I did everything I could. And by the end of it, I, was, I, I needed to get away and completely re- reset. Um, the, the experience you're talking about uh, was, was in when I was 1980, I think it was 1980, whatever. And we went on a trip to, to Barbados and we were staying at this little hostel uh, you know, uh, 10 bucks a night. Uh, there was four beds in a room and really cool place on the beach. And it was called the Boomer's Guest House. Uh, Boomer was an amazing guy. And uh, someone had mentioned that they were going out to uh, pick some mushrooms. Uh, and uh, I said, well, wh- wh- what's that? And they said, well, yeah, we're going to go to this field and we're going to pick these mushrooms. So we so oh, that sounds fun. Let's go do that. And, uh, and uh, we did. And we filled our shirts up and brought them home and made this big pot of tea and mashed it all up and it got really thick and dark and we all poured ourselves a cup of coffee basically it was tea and you know a thousand times a hundred times more than we needed as, as it turns <laughs> out but uh I, I, I did have that experience uh, of uh of of the uh psych uh, psychedelic psycho uh effects of uh of of, of mushrooms and um you know, this is what, you know, back in 1980, now we know that there's health benefits uh, for addictions and all that kind of stuff. So, but what I was really curious about at going through the whole experience was that uh, first about how crazy it was for the first hour or two before it, it, we kind of settled in. And, and, uh, and then secondly, the, how uh, spiritual of, of, uh, of an experience it was and how emotional it was. And, uh, and uh, from all different ranges, uh, from music to uh, uh, to uh, to lyrics to uh, to uh, you know talking with the, my brother and our friends and past experiences, and and I and and when it all was said and done, you know, a day later, or whatever, I, it, it, re- it dawned on me that that if it, the mind is so incredibly powerful, and if and if if, if it's that powerful. How can I, you know, I'm spending thousands of hours training my body. What if I started to think about that from a mental standpoint? I started training myself mentally uh, to be able to withstand the pressurized moments. And, and, uh, and, 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 and a light bulb just came on for me. It is that, you know, there's more to this. I can be a better player if I can train my mind as much as I'm training my body. And, uh, I, and lucky for me, I had an uncle that uh, taught uh, human psychology or child psychology and human development at the University of New Hampshire for 35 years. And he was very into uh, 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 spirituality and Buddhism and uh, Eastern philosophy and all these things. So I, I was getting all these touch points at the same time living in the Western Western uh, you know, culture about, you know, and how we look at things and how we do things yeah. and our medicines and all that. And now I'm on the other side in the off season getting all this other cultural things. And, and it just, it just hit me. And I, it was just something that I realized that, it, that, that ultimately in, in the end, we're all just a ball of energy and there, and we're just pulsating with all these kinds of, yeah, of, 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 you know, you know, atoms ripping through us at any one time and you know and how do you harness that you know how do you take that and you actually use that to your benefit when it's needed most and uh and that's what i became interested in from 1980 82 to the time i retired because i also realized that in order to really galvanize a team there had to be a bigger meaning and a bigger spiritual meaning to the team there had to be something that galvanized teams there was not just if we were just coming there every day into a dressing room and, you know, we were there to win the Stanley Cup and which is all good. But we understand we know that there's so much more to every person and every player that's there and, and, and the journey that they themselves took to get there. So how do you tap into that? And how do you motivate them? Because you realize that if you're responsible for motivating people on a day to day basis, that flame is going to run out very quickly. But if you can inspire the, the players, if you can inspire them to be their best and you understand where they're coming from and what motivates them. And you put a put a, together a culture that is 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 fun to come to in the mornings. They'll they'll motivate themselves. There's always going to be that time where you got to kind of kick someone in the ass or tap someone on the butt or or give them a hug or whatever it is. But ultimately, that's that's what I became interested, in. and that's what my focus was year after year after year. Is every year to start that training camp. How are we going to bring this team 
And it could be three players different, but three players in a team changes the dynamic incredibly. You look at look at the Rangers or all these teams that change just two or three players, and all of a sudden the chemistry, the synergy might be just off a little bit. So how do they bring that back? What is that defining moment that bring, is going to bring that team together, not what happened last year? And that became one of the reasons why I was able to play for 25 years, because if not, I probably would have quit after 10 years and went and tried to figure out something else to do that was more interesting. You know, I, I find that the uh, <laughs> that all that's so interesting and it's powerful. It, it's it's unbelievable that even at that age that you can start putting these things together. I even think at that age, what I'm thinking, it's like I'm I'm not grasping life in that manner, right? So that's that's it's really cool to hear. Well, it, Mike, our- just look up look up the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, and, and I'm sitting on a balcony in my in Hawaii where my uncle would live on the off season, and he showed me these those remember those old little slides that you used to have to put in a projector. Yeah, the yeah. Chapel of Sacred Mirrors are, are a, a series of pa- hand illustrated paintings about the human anatomy, all the way along, starting with the skeletal system, then it is overlaid with the with the uh, with the uh, you know the muscular system to the nervous yeah. system to the lymphatic system, all the way through, all the way up until you get into the spiritual being of of that and the light that's in everybody, all the way to that person that starts as a bag of bones and skeleton becomes a ball of energy out of a body. And that's where as a player and as a team, if you can get out of that whole side of the skeleton, muscular, you know, lymphatic, that inner body experience and get out of the body experience there, that's where the team really can come together. And that's what I loved. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten past the part that I read where you, you thought the geckos were dragons. And you were freaking out in Barbados. <laughs> oh, no. you, hey, oh, in yeah. that moment, hey, man, that's what I'm saying. No, you have these. Deep, you have this deep inflection on things. When I when those when those geckos were fucking dragons, I would have been like, I'm out. <laughs> God, I'm not doing this man, I can I can picture it up in the corner here right now. There, that that first, that, that first couple hours was pretty intense. 